Hey everybody, it's an exciting day today. We are finally going to test the Woodland Mills WC46 PTO driven wood chipper. We've just got a couple of things left to do. We need to check the length of the jack shaft for the PTO, make sure it's correct. Probably going to have to trim it. And then we need to get the oil into the oil reservoir and it will actually be ready to test. All right, let's get that going. YouTube and welcome back to Retired for Life. Today, hopefully, is test day for the Woodland Mills PTO driven chipper. So we have a couple of things to do to get ready and the first one we're going to do is get the oil into the hydraulic system. Now I have a 19 liter bucket uh, that I bought of the hydraulic oil. So this thing holds 17 liters. So what I did just to make it easy was I took two liters out of the bucket back in the shop, put that aside, and then I can just go ahead and empty the bucket into the reservoir. Makes it nice and easy that way, and hopefully not too messy. All right, let's get started. Well, there is no filter on this, but there is a nice fine mesh screen in there. And that's good. All right, with the oil full, the next job I have to do is cut the uh, PTO shaft to the right length. So the original length on this from button to button is 29 and 7 sixteenths. Now I have uh, a measurement of 22 inches from button to button out on mine. So I've got to cut a fair bit off of that. So let's take this apart and uh, get that cut to size. So it's a little awkward to actually measure this with the uh, safety housing on it. So we're gonna take it apart and take the safety housing off of it. So there's a little red clip here. All you need to do is pop that out with your screwdriver then the cover comes off. So what I did was I put a little piece of green tape on here and on the U-joint there, just in case there is a difference kind of thing uh, with which way it goes on. Might as well make sure I don't have any guessing when I put it back together. This thing will only go back together one way. You can't get it to uh, go into a different position. So you've got to make sure that you've got the slots lined up properly. And if you look at the end of it, you'll see that there is a difference in one of these slots here. And we'll just line that up. And slide it back together. So measuring pin to pin. I see 28 and a half inches. So I need to take off quite a lot. And whatever you cut off of one piece, you need to cut the same amount off the other. All right, folks, we got everything figured out. We're taking an awful big piece off of this, but that's what we need to do. So that's what we're gonna do.
There's one done. All right, guys, let's see how well this thing fits. All right, we're good. So next job is to uh, cut the shielding. So I need to take off about the same amount off that. It's close, but that's what we want. All right, folks, we got the jack shaft on for the PTO. Nothing has turned as of yet because I want to check the, uh, the blade and anvil in here, make sure that's all right before we actually spin it. All right, we're just kind of turning this a bit by hand. Get a little bit of the oil into the pump. Okay, now I need to check the anvil clearance. Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying today's video. And if you have, I'd really appreciate the like, and I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, if you've got any thoughts, suggestions, anything like that, I'd love to hear from you. All right, let's get back to the job. All right, so that clearance was way too big. So I've got a piece of wood shim here that I'm slipping down in there between the blade and the base plate or anvil plate, just like that. If that distance is too big it's gonna possibly cause a problem trying to cut too big of a chip and it was well over an eighth of an inch and according to the manual it's supposed to be between one eighth and one sixteenth okay we got it that looks good those are sharp. <laughs> All right, guys, so I've got oil in it, chute fastened down, lever is hooked up, our clearance is checked, PTO shaft is on. All right, let's start the tractor up. All right, let's see what happens. Well, the wheel is going. I don't see any leaks. Let's take the speed up. Let's go up to full running speed.
I think we're good for an actual test. Let's take it up the hill, set it up, and see how it goes. All right, folks, we got a few pretty small pieces that we're gonna try first, just to see how it goes, and then one that's gonna be pretty close to its capacity. We'll see how it does with that. All right, let's start things up and see where we go. Peace. All right, this will be a challenge. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. That's some nice sized chips. They won't rot away too quickly and they'll do real nice out on the trail. Yeah, that's good. I think we'll go down to the shop uh, and just open it up again and have a look and make sure everything still looks okay. Let's get that done before we call this ready for work. All right, folks, let's get this open and see how it looks in there. 
I don't see any sign of oil leaks. Well, there's nothing left down inside. It's clean. Nothing has gotten caught or snagged. Well, looks like everything is still where it's supposed to be. It looks good. Well, let's recap what we've done so far. We had a minor issue with the hitch. Assembly was pretty straightforward. It is very rugged, very ruggedly built, all very heavy steel. The PTO jack shaft on this is a bit of a hassle to put on, only because it's a much smaller tractor. I mean, putting the PTO shaft on the big uh, 75 or 100 horsepower tractor is just, they're heavier, but there's lots of room. With this, you're really kind of pulling yourself into contortions to get everything lined up and get it in place. But once it's on, everything was fine. So that's not a fault of the machine or anything. That's just inherent to the size. The speed selector works very nicely on it. You saw it handle the, the little pieces that I first put in without even thinking about it. And that one piece that was kind of oddball shaped, over four inches, it went through, got stuck when it had whittled it down to uh, too small of a size and I had to give it a bit of a push. But besides that, it chewed that up with no trouble at all. I mean, it's really, it's really got some power. Very pleased with the hydraulic feed. I mean, that was the, the big thing for me to be able to take a piece, drop it in the end and not have to worry about it. For the most part, the hydraulic drive that pushes it in will take care of it. And it, it seems to really work nicely. So very pleased. We're ready to put it to work now. I think it has passed its final inspection and it's ready to go. All we need is some weather that's gonna let us do it. I think we've got rain coming in for a couple more days. Boy, things have been wet. So if you folks have had any experience with the Woodland Mills wood chipper, this being the WC46, I'd really love to hear from you. Let me know what you think, if you've got pros and cons, any watch outs or anything that I should be looking for, I would really appreciate it. And as I said earlier, this is the first time I have operated a PTO driven chipper. So far, early impressions, I like it. All right, I think we're gonna let you folks go there. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found the video interesting, or at the very least, a little bit entertaining. And if you did, please give it a like and share it around. And I'd love to have you subscribe to the channel. That would really help. So remember to be good to each other, stay safe out there, and we will see you out on the trails the next time. Cheers. <laughs>